Here's just a slide um, from the um, Turkish laboratory looking at prenatal exposure and how it alters brain development in rats. You can see the control here. The cells show intact shape. Um, and then over here, deterioration. This is the control group. This is the exposed group. And there are many of these studies. And yet, this is what is the norm these days. This is an image showing how um, Dr. Leif Salford, uh, Dr. Leif Salford's research, and this is from over a decade ago now, microwaves can damage the blood brain, blood brain barrier. And these are images from his research. He gave a talk that I recommend, um, if you go to Environmental Health Trust, please look up the section where we have scientific conferences. And he presented in 2009 um, with the studies that his laboratory did looking at um, animals exposed to wireless radio frequency. Uh, there's a study published in Fertility and Sterility, which is one of several studies showing impacts to reproductive organs, to sperm, and et cetera. And, and in this particular study was entitled Use of Laptop Computers Connected to Internet Through Wi-Fi Decreases Human Sperm Motility and Increases Sperm DNA Fragmentation. And yet, this is common. I certainly had that laptop on my lap for many, many years. In fact, I didn't think I could live without Wi-Fi. <laughs> and I, I couldn't even imagine considering that there could ever be anything wrong with these devices that I loved and used so much. But this is our new reality. This is what we see in the halls of schools, um, in our homes. In a study that was done looking at reviewing the research on oxidative stress, of 100 studies, um, 93 found they induced oxidative stress. And that was in 2015, that review was published. And I told you more recently, the Swiss expert group review was published. Several years ago, the California Department of Health uh, released their advisory on cell phone radiation, stating that children are more vulnerable to cell phone radiation. And here's how you can decrease exposure. The advisory talked about knowing when, when uh, the radiation exposures were highest, which is when there are large files, when you're in an area of low signal, when you're moving um, a video. And uh, so video and pictures will use more than say a text. Of course, if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're uh, moving thousands of texts every day, which our kids are, uh, it doesn't mean texting is, is safe. And, and what are our kids doing? They are sending pictures and video. What are adults doing? What are all, it seems like everyone is doing now on social media, on the phone, completely unaware that the phone is creating exposures to our bodies. So the recommendations of the California Department of Health included use speaker phone, uh, sleep, well, I, I don't recommend sleeping with the phone at arm's length. We recommend turning the phone off at night, giving yourself a break. Um, I mean, we have a lot of recommendations which are actually using corded phones and minimizing use as much as possible, but don't sleep with your phone. Don't keep it in your pocket, said the California Department of Health. But what most people don't know is that when this, when this advisory was put forward by the California Department of Health, it had been redrafted dozens of times for almost a decade and finally released because Dr. Joel Moskowitz of the University of California, Berkeley, did a uh, public information request. And when the Cal, because he, he knew and, and many scientists were aware that California had this draft that they were drafting and redrafting and they refused to release it until uh, the, pr the pressure of the press and so forth. And the other thing that's on our website at Environmental Health Trust, ehtrust.org, is the fact that the first drafts were actually to protect the employees of the state of California. The first drafts were not what you see when you go to the California Department of Health, a nice little two-pager that 
tells you how to reduce exposure to cell phones. The first draft said things like, we need to purchase, the state needs to purchase lower radiating devices that employees, California state employees need to be educated about how to reduce ex their exposure to cell phones as well as home cordless phones because home cordless phones emit wireless radio frequency radiation as do cell phones. And they also said that the research was enough to conclude that these actions should happen. It wasn't if you are worried. So here is the history. Um, and there's so much history like that. This is the last decade is just recent history. There have been scientists working on this for several decades. And I stand on their shoulders working on this issue. So this is the, um, uh, the, the city of Berkeley's cell phone right to know on cell phones notice. In 2015, Berkeley passed a law, the Cell Phone Right to Know Act, that in, oh, my battery's running out. Um, one second. Okay. Uh, in 2015, the city of Berkeley passed the Cell Phone Right to Know Ordinance requiring that when you bought your phone, there would be a sign and you would be informed of the following. To assure safety, the federal government requires that cell phones meet radio frequency exposure guidelines. If you carry or use your phone in a pants or shirt pocket or tucked into a wireless network, you may exceed the federal guidelines for exposure to radio frequency radiation. Now, when it was first passed, it also said, the potential risk is greater for children. Of course, the industry sued just like they sued the city of San Francisco uh, in years prior and stopped that, or that act from being passed. And in the legal process, that statement, the potential risk is greater for children, was um, removed in order to withstand the, the challenges ahead. It withstood many court challenges. It even went where it was brought to the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court said, uh, knocked it back down, said, we're not going to um, take action on this and which maintained it. And then more recently, it lost in California. There was a, a court case where now we're in a position where the, the, uh, the ordinance is no longer in effect. And uh, our right to know is, um, we have no, no right to know in California on that. Most people don't know. There are case studies that are published showing brain, I'm sorry, breast cancer tied with cell phone radiation. Young women are, are putting the phone in their bra. It's a handy place to carry a phone. I, I mean, people are putting the phone in their pants pocket or in their tight spandex pants. And when you're going out on the town, in the bra or all day in the bra as some some women are doing. And they found unusual breast cancers located underneath right where the antennas of the phone, the phone were. And these are young women with no family history of breast cancer. And yet there are many ads and industry is putting forth, um, you know, promoting themselves as partnering to, to, protect, to protect us with the, with the pink ribbons. This is, this is just life, right? Everyone has the phone in their back pocket. Well, on the side I have there, a recent study put forward um, by Dr. Miller and Dr. Deborah Davis of Environmental Health Trust and researchers looking at the astronomical increase in colorectal cancer in the last decade in young adults, a fourfold increase. Now, what is talked about in this paper called the increased generational risk of colon and rectal cancer in recent birth cohorts in under age 40, the hypothetical role of radio frequency radiation from cell phones is that colorectal cancer cells um, are exclusively sensitive to radio frequency radiation in cellular studies that have been done. And remember that when a cell phone is in, is in your pocket or on your body or anywhere, as long as it's powered on, it is radiating. It is always connecting to the tower whether you're using it or not, because it's, it's doing a handshake with the, with the tower.